Dr. Wayne Dreyer, our body is made up of chemicals, far too many for me to elaborate here, but some of them are iron, magnesium, calcium, nitrogen, hydrogen, and on and on goes the list. These chemicals are part of a finite supply here on Earth, so what flows through our veins is part of that finite supply. To that end, the iron that's in our blood was once somewhere else, perhaps in a dinosaur, in the body of Jesus, or in a mountain in Afghanistan, and now it's in our body. And when we leave our body, our iron supply will reside someplace else on Earth as a part of that finite supply. In other words, our entire planet is made up of the exact same chemicals that constitute our physical makeup. Chemically speaking, there's no difference between humans and rocks, trees, orangutans, or distant stars, grind them all up and their chemical composition isn't what distinguishes one from the other. Our physical presence is a spiritually directed conglomeration of a hodgepodge of chemicals, and the end result is that we're beings made up of the same stuff that makes up the stars. We were made up of stardust. That's right, the stuff of dreams, twinkling, magical, beautiful, light-filled stardust. Remember that the spirit from which we originated can create anything, including worlds, so why would it choose ugly or unattractive creations? We're here in the perfect body for our time in this incarnation, and it's a living, breathing miracle in every way. It's guided and being directed by an invisible force that directs everything and everyone in the universe. It beats our heart, digests our food, circulates our blood, grows our hair, and repairs our cuts and bruises, all independent of our opinions. I wrote earlier about being independent of the opinions of others. Well, we aren't beautiful or attractive because of how we stack up against a runway model, we're beautiful because we came from beauty, so we must be the same as what we came from. All labels such as unattractive, ugly, homely, and unbecoming, as well as pretty, attractive, handsome, and beautiful, are judgments designed to compare one person to another using artificial standards set up by ego-dominated people and organizations. Living in spirit means that we see our body with all of its unique characteristics and feel thankful for the perfect temple that's temporarily housing our true, primary existence. If it's short or tall, bald or hairy, stumpy or slender, extend loving appreciation to it every day. If it can't see or hear, resides in a wheelchair or a hospital bed, has crooked teeth or only three toes, whatever, love this collection of stardust. A prayerful thought might go like this, I think of my body as a piece of the eternal, an individualized expression of God. I live in spirit, inspired because I'm the same as the loving energy that created me, which is perfect. Think about the logic of what I'm saying here. Obviously we can't live a life of inspiration if the physical shell we take with us everywhere is perceived as anything other than a divine, perfect creation. Our attitude toward our body, along with how we feed and exercise it, must match up with spirit. We came from love, so we must extend that love and appreciation to our body.